Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 51. In the show, we're talking about antimatter, iMaverick, and the Our Cloud. Thank you for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 51. With us today, we have uh, Johan Als Mixing and uh, Cecilia, who's joining me as our guest because poor old Stuart is, I think, caught the cold I had last week. Um, and Jan Vermeulen is at a BlackBerry event, who I'm sure he'll give us feedback next week on. Well, we'll keep, we'll keep him to that. Mm, definitely. Um, all right, let's get into what's happening in a round, uh, upcoming dates and stuff. Okay, something that apparently, well, it's been coming for, I think, about 13, 14 years. Duke Nukem is supposed to be coming out the next week. <laughs> I think it's the 14th of June. It really is supposed to be released. I will believe it when it happens. Like, if it's not going to happen by now, they would have said something. Yeah, but I mean, uh, okay, you can, fair. you can download the demo. Can you? Yeah, it wasn't on the website. It looked like you could. Okay, I'll have a look later tonight, definitely. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll giving Cecilia a bit of history of what it actually Duke Nukem is and why we all keep going. It was about 13 years ago, we were all playing this game. It was awesome. Um, based slightly, I think, at Night of the Dead, or there was a very B-grade movie what, it was based on. What is on. it? Is it a role-playing game? It's a shooter. Is it a shooter, first-person shooter game? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and in this time, it was quite, it was, it was just well done. The, the storyline was quite good. It, it was clever. Okay. And then... They were, okay, now the big half about this, they're going to bring, bring out a sequel. Mm -hmm. Then the, the deadline for sequel one slipped a bit, and they slipped a bit more. Then it got cancelled. Then no, no, another set of people are going to take it over. Then they even got to the point where you could actually pre-order it. Um, so I think Did you so have to prepay for the pre-order? Yes, of course. Oh, so okay. far, and then people got paid back when well, okay. some of them got paid back. But I think they eventually went through, this is now the third time you can pre-order, fourth mm. time you can pre-order. <laughs> but it really does look like it's coming out this time. But, and tell me, are people actually bothering to pre-order? Yes. Aren't they saying, oh, we'll believe it when we see it? I think it's at that point now, it's like, really? Okay, we've got to get into this. It's really going to happen. I think to the point, I was looking at the website earlier, that you can actually get a, a demo version now. Now, this is unlike previously, also previously they released a demo, a shot of a demo version they're playing. Apparently, it was purely mocked up, all done, you know, CGI, not actually with the games engine, nothing, because none of that was written. Um, but everybody thought, okay, no, well, they're showing this, so it must be real. Um, but they never gave you one you could actually play. Um, this one you can actually download as far as so you could see, and you can actually play on your PC. So okay. by My, now, we would have Will it work something. on a Mac? <laughs> it might actually. I oh, don't know. Huh? Okay. My recollection of, of what made Duke Nukem the game to play years ago was the fact that you had adult content in the game. Yeah. So there was uh, strippers. Not really adult. It's yeah. not so it's a bit like a leisure, leisure suit? No. no. Leisure suit See, it it was more Larry. hinted at. Okay. And the language was slightly more risque. Yes. Uh, but it wasn't bla blatant to the mm -hmm. point where, you know, it would get banned or, or the PG ratings. But it was there. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, uh, most, a lot of us are looking forward. I mean, just as a thinking back to our younger years on, on what the old Duke Nukem was about. And I, I must say, that I don't think they can capture it. It's too gone too too long now. It's going to be... Look, I looked at the website, and the website looked pretty cool. Well, that trailer they're running on the website is not too bad. I'm sure we can't show it in this show. So I'm not even going to try, but um, the trailer doesn't look too bad. Okay. Well, like anyway, good. head over to, to their website, check it out. Uh, if you're really keen, you can pre-order it. Um, by now, I think it is in the stores. The stores must have it to deliver and all the rest of it. So you would have heard something if it wasn't going to be delivered. I see um, Jargon in the chat room says there's actually a South African launch party scheduled for it. Um, oh, cool. Where? He's pasted the link here in um, the IRC. Okay. Um, um, if you wanna, if somebody want to quickly open that link and just uh, just confirm, but apparently it's at Uters. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, that would suit you, Newcomb. That that is what you can is about. Yeah, this, this, the strip club in the regional game was fantastic. It was oh. just, uh, well, in the other news, if you don't want to go to the Hooters uh, Duke Nukem strip club party, <laughs> that's um, true. That's there's true. the uh, OX coffee um, this Saturday. It's basically a bunch of hackers, a guy from ZeraCon. Um, they're basically trying to do it, or they are doing a monthly coffee meetup where they talk about what's happening in the security 
Did you did you say which coffee shop? Where it is think? Wolves. Uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't have time to look up the exact details of it. Okay. Um, but it's it's Wolves in Johannesburg. I don't know where that is. I have no idea. Okay. Um, but I know they're doing it monthly. Um, if you get into the ZX Con IRC and ask the guys there, they'll give you all the details. Apparently, it's starting to grow a bit. We're going to get Dominic White on in, I think, two weeks. And he's going to chat about it and tell us what, what he's doing. Also, having said that, ZA Con, I'm busy asking for papers. So if you're wanting to start submitting papers for, uh, if you don't know what ZA Con is, it's basically a locally done security conference, um, non commercial. Um, you know, there's no fees or anything like that, so the guys can just rock up. I think they, they, might, they might have actually had sponsored coffee last year. And it's already done at the University of Johannesburg. Um, and that's actually quite interesting. But that's going to be on the 8th of October. But obviously, they need people to come and present. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite a, quite a fun thing. We were there last year. And I know Stu gets quite involved. He's already got ideas for printing out badges for the thing. Um, but we'll chat a bit more when Dominique White is here. And Cecilia, one of your things. The Khao Train is one year old. Yes, yeah. So happy birthday to the Khao Train. They've been running for a year now. Um, I remember last year I was one of the crazy determined people who said I will be on the very first Khao Train that leaves Santon Station. And um, yeah, last year, today, a year ago, that first Khao Train that left at 5.25 from Santon was packed. I remember there were people standing in the Khao Train. Um, and just as we left the station, because nowadays the train driver doesn't really speak to the passengers, um, but as the train departed and picked up speed, the driver actually came online and said um, something to the effect of, welcome aboard the very first Khao train ride. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now traveling at 160 kilometers an hour. Um, you know, and obviously everybody on board then cheered. And You all yeah. kept your pants on. Yes, we all kept our Oh, that was later. Sorry. <laughs> that, that was later. later. That was yeah. much later. Sorry um, about that. But yeah, so it's... Our it's other host from Let's Talk Possibility was involved in that. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it's just um, time flies. I mean, this time last year, the Khao Train only opened up. We were getting ready for the World Cup and it's now Khao Train. It's, it's almost become a way of life. Now people are starting to nag and say, okay, when can we travel from Joburg to Pretoria? Soon, um, apparently. They, they said... Early July, but we're still waiting for exact dates. Yeah. I'm hoping there was a rumor a while ago that will be about the 22nd or 28th of June. Okay. Um, I'm really hoping so, but but we'll see yeah. what happens. But the Khao Train did tweet the other day that they will announce the official yeah. date soon. Um, so I think we must just watch the the Twitter feed and see what's happening. Cool. All right. Um, also, anything else, if you want to check out for any of our dates, we put them all into stardates.co.za. Uh, so it's www.stardates today. Also, if you have any events coming out, um, please email us. Uh, inf, uh, you know, dates at Let's Talk Geek or dates at stardates.co.za uh, and we'll be happy to add them in for you. Um, Tim, just on for the record, uh, stardates.co.za does work. Um, Google is starting to terminate uh, root domains. I, I saw that. Yeah, cool. So, Google. yeah, if everybody, everybody ever wanted to host a website, really look at Google. I'm having lots of fun. Stardates is hosted on Google Apps, so... I said if they if they ran WordPress and I could find a way of adding it to do our blo our, our MP3 uploads and our for our feeds and stuff, I would definitely do it. But then just not quite there yet. It's well, slightly more static, but I can see they're starting to add programming. There's stuff JavaScripting there. in the background, so I'm, yeah. I'm sure they they are looking towards that. Um, I, if I had time, I would write something. Yeah, fair. I just <laughs> the fair, moment now, can, uh, but yeah. it's cool. No, it's definitely worthwhile. If you if you're wanting to start playing now, it's free. There's, there's nothing better than free, and it's incredibly powerful. And they take care of the bandwidth. It doesn't cost and you anything. How, how secure is it? Very secure. Okay. As secure as any website. As, uh, okay. yeah. Don't when you your stick up. Out. Sure. No, we'll stick up your hand and tell the be the world that you won't get hacked. And you will yeah. get hacked. Oh, yeah. 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 Don't stick up your hand. What? Uh, that, is that what Sony? That sounds a bit Sony -ish. No, no. S Sony upset people because <laughs> they. Okay. Went and attacked one of the guys. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know about what, what's his name. I want to say hot soup, but it's not hot soup. I uh, can't think of it. But there was a guy basically he reverse engineered the PlayStation Three. Uh, originally, with the PlayStation Three, you uh, you could run Linux on it, and then they locked that functionality out. And this upset a couple of guys, so they went out and they reverse engineered it. 
basically got the keys out, worked out how mm. to install the stuff. So Sony sued him. Sony sued the individual? Yeah. Oh, um, no. Basically, they settled out of court and basically, from what I gather, he didn't have to pay anything, but basically he had to pull all his information off the web and all the rest of it. So it, they're improving. They're not like trying to get these guys thrown in jail. So that's a major improvement. But this upset a whole bunch of people. So basically, that's where the whole the guy started hacking Sony. And now mm. I think it's just gone a bit beyond that. It's just now, well, can we join in the, f you know, it's fun. It's, just, uh, it's not the best way to get back at Sony, I think. But at the same time, got to listen. Well, at the same time, you've got all these people going and feeling powerless. Mm. You have these big corporations that, you know, can sue you. And what do you do? You can't fight them. Yeah. So at the same time, the, it, it's a way of them getting the balance, but also this can go quite out of balance and these guys can start maliciously and going a bit overboard. And, and the people they're actually attacking, you know, the usernames, it's not Sony. It's Sony's name that's getting dragged through the mud, but the credit cards are, the, are real, real people that they're getting mm. hold of. And that's also <laughs> not good. So it's one of those very gray areas that I'm not sure whether I should be pro or, or against. So we'll just leave it at that. And we'll take it like that. Yeah. All right, um, something else that we didn't quite mention in the calendar, but, but I thought we would talk as one of our topics. It's welcome to IPv6 day. Mm. Uh, I, I know Johan knows what this is. Cecilia, you, you're not um, quite... I'm not quite there, but I, I, you have given me a little bit of a brief, so I, I sort of understand what it's about. All right, just giving but you some more background. We've mm. all heard of IPv4 that runs basically... What's it? IP on everything. and um, Basically runs the whole the internet, and it's it's the the protocols and the numbering behind it. Now, the problem with that is back in the day when they created, they never foresee, saw the amount of PCs we need. So they only had a, when I say limited amount of numbers, it's it, quite a huge number. It's two to the uh, 32, I think. Uh, That's a lot. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of numbers. Number. What they found out is we're running out of IPs. Mm -hmm. um, in Africa, we still got plenty, so we're not running out of them anytime soon. But through the rest of the world, they are running out. And... But the people foresaw this quite a while ago and they created the next version, which is IPv6. And I think it's got, it's, this is now 2 to the 128. Hmm. So it is scarily huge, the amount of numbers. Um, but the problem is it's nobody's started migrating to it yet. So, and the reason for that is it's going to be quite hard. There's a lot of changes that are going to need to occur and it's going to be expensive. And until people need to, they're not going to. So, but, but, but for, because we're now running out, this, people are starting to look at it and starting to play with it. And Google and a couple of the large organizations set aside a day and said, okay, well, let's on this day, we will make sure that we can all um, run IPv6. Okay. Not so much migrate, we're going to start providing it and make a day of it so people can just talk about it and that all the people can go on it. I know we um, are migrated our sites so that it also are available on IPv6. Mm. And even through that, I can see the things are there, but... It's not quite there. Certain tools, you know, your ways of, now how do you test it? How do you find out that it's working? You've got to find people and, okay, now I've got IPv4 and IPv6. How do I make, like one of my, my premise, how do I force it to go down the IPv6 route? And I had to also work out, like I found out with DNS is like, Johan was talking, stardates.co.za. On, on those root domains, how do you set up your DNS server to actually resolve when I'm asking it in IPv6, that it gives me the IPv6 address. Mm. Um, all that stuff is available. I've worked out how hard to do it. So it's there, but it's testing. But I would say we're still a couple of years away. If you're a layman and you're not involved in this, don't, worry. don't believe the fear and doubt that mm. everybody's selling. Uh, somebody else will take care of it for you, and it's not going to happen. What I would say is if you're going to be buying a route in the next year or so, start, start looking if it's got IPv6 no, capabilities. You're approaching this wrong totally. I mean, mm. let's pull another raptor, a rapture. So let's tell everybody out there to please sell all their things. We'll take care of that money until the world comes to an end <laughs> because of IPv4. Don't, don't, you've got to approach this oh, right. So, we need oh, hang on. So oh, do you think that's what Harold Camping was actually predicting? The end of IPv4? There we go. Everything will stop. It's, it's, no, uh -huh. What's going to happen is we're going to run out of IPv4. So somebody's going to come down and take up all the IP numbers. Hey. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to move to the new land, which is IPv6. There we go. Okay, I get it now. It makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> but any, anybody with a lot of funds lying around will gladly use it to actually advance the show and, and, 
and give us some more content on the show. So please, if you're going to want to donate some money, <laughs> we'll gladly hold on to it while you wait for the world to actually recover. We'll utilize it. We'll, we'll, we'll do good efforts in your name to... Yes. Okay. <laughs> Before we get ourselves in trouble. But anyway, if you, know, if you are in IT though, start looking at IPv6. Yes. Uh, it's not going to be here for another two years, but now is when you want to start educating yourself and working on how it works and mm-hmm. starting to find the problems with it. It doesn't quite work the same way as IPv4. I'm not going to go into my rant with how it irritates me in certain ways because there's certain functionality. You can see it's done in a very purest way. It's done by guys sitting in the office going, well, if it could work, this is all beautiful. And they, they stop looking at real how real organizations work uh, like they don't. There's no private ranges. Yeah. Like... Uh, the 10 range or the 192 range or the 172 range. And they go, but you don't need it. We have enough IPs. You don't need it. But I'm going, but a private organization wants to set up a network internally and run that. Now to do that, they would have to go to Afrinic or one of the others and buy a range. Or they'll get a range from, let's say, Telcom. But as soon as they move from Telcom to Neotel or whoever, they've got to give up that range. Mm -hmm. That means they've got to go and renumber the entire network. Yeah, You mentioned that. It's it's little things like that that... Anyway, we'll, we'll go off from that. And but, I, but I think the fun is going to be at the moment is very easy to remember the IP address. I mean, Google's DNS service, 8.8.8.8. In V6, they are going to be... Well, there is a... Dot EF dot <laughs> CB dot... That's going to well, be yeah, it's, it's <laughs> four digits. So, and each of those digits can be A to F. So, it's four digits. And then there are... i trying to remember how many of it. It's more than six. Sorry, you're right. I think it's eight. So, yeah, good luck remembering any yeah. IPs. And see how the, the reliance on DNS servers are going to become a reality. But what Shortcuts you, what's, are not going to be available. Uh, it gets more complicated than that because in the, the second half, you can use things where you can use your MAC address and multiply it with... It just it gets confusing when you actually... There's no ways you're going to remember these numbers. DNSs. DNS is cool. Okay. Next. All right. Um, okay, we're going to talk... Uh, the next thing is in... Everybody knows what's been happening in Japan with all the tsunamis and everything going on. And, of course, they had all the damage to their nuclear power stations. And, obviously, you've got all the people there busy trying to salvage and work in the power stations, and there's a limited amount of time they can do that. But they say even with that, they're going to get radiation poisoning. And, you know, in 30 years' time and stuff, they're going to have problems. Um, Siri, did you read a bit further? Or? No, actually, sorry, I okay. didn't get a chance to read um, further. So what they're actually finding now is that they're basically some older people in ch- Japan have come forward and said, well, you know, you're saying that these poor people or, or, or youngsters to them that are working here in 30 years will have cancer. Well, why don't you send us in? You know, we're we volunteering. In 30 years, we, we you know, all the statistics say we won't be alive, so we won't have time to get cancer. Mm. Secondly, because they're older, their cells are dividing at a slower rate. So the propagation of cancer or anything is much slower. So that if they do get in cells that get damaged and stuff like that, the chances it will take far longer for, for cancer to appear. So never mind 30 years, it's going to be 40 years or whatever. Um, so they're saying we're the prime people and we're volunteering. We want to rather go there than sending these people who are then you know, eventually going to die from mm. cancer. No, that's interesting. But do you do you honestly believe it's purely out of humanitarian perceptions that they're volunteering? Because, for example, I know um, that the Japanese economy is actually a bit, I almost want to say top-heavy. They've got more elderly citizens as opposed to young ones actually in the workforce. Um, and there was talk that it's the, the fact that it's so skewed it's starting to put strain on the young ones going into the workforce because they now have to work longer, um, pay more taxes in order to support those who are on government pension. Yeah. Um, so don't you perhaps think it's also um, these elderly citizens who are saying, look, we actually know that we're putting strain on the government because there's more of us that fewer people now have to, um, fewer people are supporting us. Um, so isn't this? Well, I suppose it's also humanitarian. That's still, that's then. still um, altruistic. Them, to me. yeah, them it's saying, okay, well, I'm going to risk myself yeah. to help other people. You know what your reasons are. I, I think that's always good. That's still interesting. I quickly scanned through the article, yeah. and um, it's according to this um, website, more than 200 retirees volunteered. Um, so that's that's quite interesting. That's very cool. 
Mm, and it's quite an interesting take on the problems and how to circumvent them. Yeah. Um, so it's it's using what you have and the advantage of old age. Mm. There are advantage, you know, <laughs> counterintuitively, yeah. and looking at it at a slightly different angle, which I always like. It's just interesting for me how selfless some people actually are, and I suppose that's a very selfless act. Mm, it's very cool. It looks like most of these people are actually retired engineers. You w- you would have to have some technical background to go and work. You know, you can't just send someone who doesn't know because it, it, there is certain things that they need to do in there to fix it. So you can't just send you know someone who's Labor. uneducated in. Um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I apologize for not having done my homework beforehand, but I see here, um, interestingly enough, there's a little sentence at the bottom that says all that uh, these people are volunteering, but it actually hasn't been Accepted. allowed yet. Yes. Um, the Japanese government is apparently still debating or mm. deciding whether this is a good idea or not. Um, still. Uh, though it's having said it's normal government, it takes a while for wheels to turn yeah. and they need to look at the political implications and all the rest. Sure. But, you know, hopefully it does go forward because, you know, it, it will save some of the younger people. Mm. Um, and, you know, so these are people who want to help. All right, into, okay, into one of the slightly more interesting things we came across. Um, and it's basically, it's quite a very interesting story called uh, Members Baffling Discovery, Can Hot Water Freeze Before Cold? And it's basically a story about a child uh, in Africa who basically he was talking about how in the, uh, there they, they make these little ice cream things by taking hot milk and they boil it and then they basically wait for it to cool and then they, they put it in the freezer with a stick and then it comes out and they make themselves little ice cream and ice lollies with it. And uh, fortunately, because there's a quite a big, uh, it was in a boarding house and you now boarding is quite rowdy, you know, if you don't get your milk in first, you don't get to get your ice cream. So what he did is the one time he got there and he boiled his milk and he saw somebody else going for the fridge and he thought, well, I don't have time to, you know, wait to cool down because otherwise I'm not going to get my place. So he basically took his bowl of milk, put it in the fridge, and it froze before the room temperature milk. And he then went to his science teacher and said, you know, look at this. And the science teacher said, ah, oh, go away, you're lying. You've made a mistake and mocked him all about it. But he didn't, he didn't give up. And he kept on talking and eventually they had a professor that was uh, visiting from somewhere else. And he told the professor... And the professor said he naturally wanted to also go, no, this is wrong. But you're saying they've been taught, they're wanting to, you know, if somebody's questioning things, rather help them, go look at it, experiment a bit more, teach them to Apply keep on trying. scientific method, method to, to it. perhaps understand it. And yeah. w- don't give up. You know, if you've got a questioning mind, encourage it. Mm. Go look. Maybe you're wrong, but at least do some experiments, test it, and from that you'll, you'll, you can learn stuff. So when you got back to his university, you got one of your... Gradually, he says, oh, well, I did this. Please go test it. So the guy went back, tested it, and guess what? It worked. Okay, so just clarify. So you boiled chemi- something, okay. bo- say boiled liquid if you take from boiling point straight into the fridge versus the same liquid at, at room, 30 degrees. room temperature into the fridge and the boiled one freezes before yes. the room temperature. Yeah, so this um, this effect has now been dubbed um, after the student who observed it. Um, it's a Tanzanian student, and it's now called the Mpemba effect after the student Erasto Mpemba. And um, the professor who assisted him is Professor Osborne from Dar es Salaam. But apparently uh, this effect was already observed in the 13th century. Yeah. Um, so it's not quite that new, but I, I suppose it's never really been documented properly before. Um, whereas now maybe, I, I don't or know. Or maybe people looked at it and said, no, read those, oh, that, that wrong scientific method, they misdiagnosed mm. it, you know, freezing in those days, they maybe using wrong methods, and everybody just mm. keeps on missing because it's, it isn't quite logical that yeah. it's going to work like that. But also this is the story I think what I find quite interesting. It's someone who noticed an effect that everybody said, well, no, that can't be like that, and said, no, no, but I saw it and mm. went back and looked again mm. and then tried to tell someone and get it out there. Uh, and that is typical, you know, it's a very good scientific thing. It's what we want and we want people to do. And it shows you that, you know, even if the guys are bright, doesn't mean that they're right. Yeah. And I suppose the moral of the story is to never stop questioning and asking no. why or how. Um, and even if you, if you do question, go back, recheck, 
you might be, and, and the fact of checking, you, you learn things from that. Um, and you might be right. Uh, they do go into a couple reasons why it might work, and it's got to do with some of is that the boiled wa water they have noticed if there's no gas in it, it freezes quicker. Um, so by boiling it, maybe you get all the oxygen, gas, and nitrogen out, and at room temperature, there's more. Well, there's another thing where they say it, they talk about super freezing, where certain liquids you actually need super to drop cooling, it below yeah. zero temperature before freeze. And what they say is that for some reason, when you go from room temperature down, you can actually go to a much colder temperature before it will freeze. Um, there's a, a couple of other ones. It's in the link. We'll put it into the wiki, of course, so you can go through all the different reasons. Look, they don't actually know for certain yet. They're still proposing, and it might actually be a combination of all, all the different reasons. But it still shows you that, you know, counter to anything I would have thought, boil water, shove in the fridge, and room temperature. The f if, you want to if you want to freeze water quickly, boil it. So from now on, boiling water in your ice cubes for or your ice trays for ice for your beer, or rather, a your admittedly, whatever. you know, you need to in take in the time that you boil. It might actually make it longer, but oh, see, so you, uh, you see now that's interesting. You can actually do a speed test to see how fast it really <laughs> will be. <laughs> Which one will work better? Cool. All right. Um, okay. The next story is actually quite an interesting one. It's a local story. Um, I Maverick got all. all it was announced today. Announced today. Um, so for those who um, follow South African news and like a bit of an alternative opinion, um, the Daily Maverick is an online newspaper and um, they announced a new product coming soon. It's um, an iPad application which yep. allows you to subscribe to the iMaverick, which will be a daily iPad publication of the news and it's along with the subscription is the iPad the cost of the iPad is included okay. well generally just give some background on what the Daily Maverick is and what it has been before is it's basically an online website and they've been releasing you get a you can subscribe to an email from them once a day which I know I'm subscribed to I know Cecilia subscribed to and it is quite interesting it covers you know the news stories from around the world and with some local things and then on the site they normally have opinion pieces on what's going on now, what they seem to be trying to do is sort of a daily newspaper slash magazine, um, and that's what the daily, the iMaverick will be, from what I gather. Um, and what's quite interesting, as the city was saying, was this. With your subscription, there's two flavors. There's one for 400 and one for, I think it's 500 Rand, that you can either get a uh, iPad 2 uh, 16 gig for the 400, or a, and that's just the Wi-Fi version, or for the 500, you can get the 32 gig um, with 3G. My recommendation is get the 3G one. I have a non-3G iPad. It's limiting. Uh, the main reason is nothing else is the battery life of my iPad. So if you think you're going to run your Wi-Fi or everything through your phone, I've tried that. My phone will go flat before my iPad will, and you'll be stuck without internet. I'm just scanning through this iMaverick website that they've already put up for the pre-orders. So I mean, is this a? Uh, I mean, I hope this is a quality of the magazine um, uh, as it's going to be on the iPad. Uh, they say that that's what they're planning on doing. Because this looks really like yeah, it looks like a printed media. Yeah. On if I look at it, it's going to look like it's going to be world class media. Um, it's, it should be quite interesting. We did do some, or Celia was doing some maths. Do you want to just bring up what you um, the stats you did? Well, I just. It's a bit controversial, and I suppose it's just my thumb suck figures. So that's why I'm not really keen on quoting them. Um, but basically, uh, you must remember that along with this, you are subscribing to the iMaverick yeah. app. Um, so that's included in your monthly fees. Um, so obviously, you're paying off the purchase of an iPad plus your subscription cost to iMaverick. Um, but it's... Uh, it's a bit of a pricey deal. If you just go buy an iPad 2, um, if you're looking at the 16 gig Wi-Fi, it's roughly 4,400 Rand a month, uh, once off. And if you buy the 32 gig 3G model, it's roughly about 6,600 Rand that you're paying. Um, whereas if you go look at the um, iMaverick's monthly subscrip subscription costs, and you look over because the subscription is for two years, then you're almost play, paying double the amount that you would pa buy, <laughs> pay. Sorry, um, if you just had to buy the iPad, 
Um, so it is a bit of a pricey deal. But um, I'm a big fan of the Daily Maverick and their publications and their columns. Um, so I would I would go for it. Also, I don't have an iPad. So, I, hey, I know you know. you're quite tempted by it. Yeah, I, so there was one thing included. that put you off getting it today. Yes, um, I did briefly discuss it with the Daily Maverick team. Um, if you go and sign up or register to uh, – because – it's not quite a lucky draw, but it's on a first come, not also not quite a first come first serve basis. I'm not actually quite sure how they will decide who gets it, because there's limited iPad to stock, yeah, yeah. so that's why you have to uh, go and apply, and you might be lucky and you know be given it or not. However, that website that you fill in, to me, it didn't look secure, and. The website asks a whole bunch of personal details like your birthday, your ID number, your residential address, your telephone number, your income, um, because obviously if it's a monthly subscription, they want to be sure that you can afford to pay it. And yeah, like I say, the website didn't look secure to me. So I asked them. um, Sorry, let's just go into what we mean by secure. If you go into your banks or there is it. Well, or HTTPS encrypted. If you look at your browser as it is on the screen now, you must have some sort of a lock at least up there somewhere. And I don't see any security. This site is yes. open. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and what Cecilia is saying is, I mean, it's asking for initials, first name, name, marital status. status. What has that got to do with it by any case? ID number. The, the, the reason is you, you're almost signing up for like a cell phone contract. And the cell phone people also ask for all these details. So the fact they're asking for these details, we don't have a problem with. No, and not at all. that's very normal. I, I, and I mean, I was happily busy filling it in until I came to the income question, which slightly put me off. And then something in the back of my head just said, hang on, you're filling in your personal details here without really checking how secure is this website. And yeah, like Johan now said, there's no little lock. There's no HTTPS. Um, so I, I then immediately stopped and said, okay, this is a very sweet deal, but I'm not willing to yeah. risk my personal no, information. No, saying that we, we, we're slightly paranoid because we, we've seen what can go wrong. And for this to actually work, you would need somebody to intercept you. But No, but this is not paranoia. I mean, the basis says you do not give your ID number on a site that doesn't at least yeah. have a security. I mean, Correct. sorry, yeah. that's, that's not paranoia. Um, that's just common yeah. sense. Well, either way, um, I did manage to make contact with, um, I'm not sure if he's the sub-editor or editor. Either way, I spoke to Philip DeVett, and um, he said they are not um, running SSL, and they don't consider ID numbers sensitive. Um, so therefore, they're not asking for information that would enable ID theft. Um, either way, he did say that if there is any concerns, we're more than welcome to contact him personally. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to. I'll gladly contact him. Um, but you've asked me for my physical address, my full names, and my ID number. That's Plus enough. your income. For me, that's that's. Uh, my thing with most of these ones, these are the questions that a bank will ask to verify your who you Fair. are. But so I have never done... If somebody now phones me with these details and go, well, you know, we have your whatever and here's your information and they basically can string off a whole bunch of things. From that, they, they can get people then to give them that, that last piece of information or they can go to a bank mm-hmm. and go, look, I'm this person, here's all this information. It's not something I want... Okay, I'll give you a good example. publicly over the internet. I'll give you a good example. Um, if I had your ID number... You can log into Telcom's website and get detailed statements with just the ID number. Mm. You need the phone number and the ID number, and then they log- give you can details. You? That, yes, Not you can. Oh, uh, when did you last go? You can register as a user. I need your ID number and your full name and last your telephone time number. Last time I went, you actually also need the ID, the number on top of your slip. They've when I so they add out, that. They've added that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sorry, uh, just just to uh, okay. I, I did. Okay. So also originally it used to be able to do that, but now. Okay, um, I would say yeah. Sorry. Uh, but, but having said that, we gr- great thing. Uh, I think it's going to be very cool. Yes, and one thing that um, I haven't been able to verify, it, but it's definitely the first daily um, online newspaper subscription in South Africa. Um, and I don't actually, I'm not sure if there are many other iPad applications that um, I know there was one are other daily. One done by Rupert Murdoch that they were trying to do something okay. like this. 
but it wasn't quite the same. This one, I think, will work out a lot better. Yeah. And but still, it's fantastic that it's that's it's a South African product. Seeing and that you spoke to him, um, plans to expand to Android. Yes. Yes, it's in the pipeline. Oh, on, Blackberry, Android tablets. And yes, no, fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair. And Johanna is my co-host at LT Afrikaans. You'll be happy to know that iMaverick will be available in Afrikaans as well. So now that'll support. Yeah. There cool. we go. Not necessarily mm. still get me to buy a thing from Steve Jobs, but... But um, what they say but is also, well, if, if, the, you, when if it comes you have out on an Android. iPad, soon they're going to releasing where you can just buy the app. Okay, done. So I'm going to wait for that and, and do it that way because yeah. I already have one. Right. Just for interest sake, how many apps have you bought now? A couple, actually. Yeah, it's actually been fun. Now Google eventually decided to give us some buyed apps. Well, I, I buy from more from iPad than... Oh, okay. While we're talking about Apple products, can mm. we talk about the iCloud? Oh, I meant to add it, yes. Uh, WWDC. I meant On that point, I'll take a break. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's not so bad. You, you'll say there's lots of pro things. You know, they're going to get this new revolution thing called... Uh, uh, Cloud storage. No, wait. <gasps> and, and notifications where, where you, you pull it down to see the notifications. That sounds familiar. Yeah, no, yeah. The, I, I heard about that yesterday on the keynote. Uh, uh, t- um Leo Deportes team was, it was live, and it wasn't yesterday, it was on Monday. Yeah. Sorry, Monday night. They were streaming, somebody in the, in the event was actually streaming out, I think, on Justin, and they were turning it around on Twit until they get caught. But I think they went through the whole show, and yes, everybody got all excited. You know, pull the top of the screen down, and you get all this information. Uh, yeah, I think I saw it on Android. But, you know, I'm actually pro this. I want best of breeds. I want two. I don't want either one to win. I want both to fight out and innovate and create a new feature. And I'm going to go, wait, that's cool. Let's take that. And at the end of the day, you're going to land up with two very awesomely incredible products. However, okay, yes. that's one thing <laughs> That's one thing for the iPhone. And yeah. I'm an iPhone user. And okay, that's cool. I'm not sure if it will really make much difference to my life. Maybe it will. I don't know. I'll see when I have the feature. However, with the iCloud, which is cloud computing or storage or something, my main concern is because I have a Mac, will that now lock me in to using a Mac? So let's decide in future that I decide I rather want to try out the latest HP. Then, well, how do I access my data that's now then? So f- I'm sorry, okay. Steve Jobs, but, you know, me as an Apple user, I'm not going to use your iCloud then. Okay, let's be fair. I mean, Microsoft is doing the same thing with their sync software. And Google is doing, okay, you can't really blame Google because you can use their sync on any platform. Yes. Exactly. And but that's why I, I still stick to Google. Okay. I'm, I'm putting everything into Google because I know that's cross-platform. With this and with Microsoft, I, because there's that uncertainty, I'd rather not risk it. Well, that, that's the thing. Is, just, I, I see what you're saying. Is if you're going to store your contacts, okay, maybe you will use the iCloud because it will sync better. But then you're going to use Google on top of that. Yes. Um, also, you're going to use Dropbox. Agreed. Because you know the files you drop in there, you can pick up in your Windows client, you can pick up in your uh, Linux client, you can pick up on your Android phone. It's not limited to… Yes, it works nicely on Linux. It, Dropbox. It works beautifully. What's even better, yeah. um, which I, I find we were playing around with, is there's a, a command line interface to it. Yes. No, so really? Like, listen, Your go look at it carefully. Dropbox okay, we're getting on, sidetracked. On, yeah, I know. <laughs> Dropbox on Linux is actually Paul Scripps. Now look at it carefully. It? Oh, it's okay. a bunch of pull scripts just hitting the API on the back end. So theoretically, you can do whatever you want. It's Look, I use it it's, on it's our server because obviously we, we also distribute this uh, our podcast on torrents. So if you want to, you can also get it from Pi- uh, Pirate Bay and somewhere else, which I'm not going to mention, <laughs> which we allow to legally do because it's our content. Um, but just for the people that are not following us at the moment, um, we're pumping the product called Dropbox. Um, it's free for two gigs, and when you do referrals, you can get like me up to 10 gigs. I've got the maximum on referrals, and it's absolutely... It's incredible. It's, it's well worth it. It's worth it. I know there's guys going around about SugarSync. The problem with SugarSync is you've got to buy the client. Mm. So your storage is free, but you've got to then buy to have your PC client. You've got to buy to have your Android client or whatever. This is all free. I'm sorry. This wins. And it works. It's just simple. It it's just, beautiful. It is. It's the way you want it to. Work. I, I could put this on my parents' PC, and it would work. I've done it. No, no, that's what I mean. It would just work. I wouldn't need to think about anything. I could share stuff with them. It is. It is that simple. And some of the um, suppliers that I deal with, um, when it comes to transferring large files, yesterday I sat in a meeting where the one supplier said to me, 
you know what, can't I just send you a Dropbox link? And I said to him, of course you can, by all means. Um, so it's, it's, no, it's beautiful. Good. But anyway, coming back to the iCloud, yeah. I, I, as an Apple user, I'm sitting here with my Mac and my iPhone is lying here next to me. I uh, just a moment of silence for Cecilia. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure could, I want could be, to do it. Yeah, it could be worse. You could be running Windows. True. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we, we, we have Windows, yeah, Linux and, and Mac here today. So, Good yeah. point. Mm. Yeah, actually, good point. Yeah, I'm sitting behind a, I'm a sitting Windows, behind a Windows machine. machine yeah, and uh, Tim is sitting on a Ubuntu. Yep. 10.04? 11.04. You got, oh, sorry, 11.04, not 11.11. Not 11, uh, 11.10, which isn't out yet. 11.04, the latest, the nat- Natty Narwhal. Yeah? I'm running it. Okay, except I'm not running their Unity, the Unity interface because it's I'm so not going to go into why, but it, it... No, we can. We've got a couple of minutes to, to kill you. I mean, I had I had one of my junior technicians at the office storm me down and go, Yo, have you tried the new interface for you? Need? For Ubuntu, it's absolutely bad. I said, yeah, have you ever used Windows 7? <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's the whole thing about not finding your icon. It's like bringing up the bar and just type what you want to do. and It will bring up the icon for you. Then do it you actually works do, well. Do you know what? I don't actually have a problem with that. That I'm actually happy with. If, if Unity worked, and my problem with Unity, it's too slow. So I will drag to the left to pull up the sidebar. And I'll wait for two seconds. Also, all my tab bars are gone now. Now, I tend to work with two screens, and I've normally got about four applications I'm switching between. So to me, to, I need to be able to switch quickly. So if I, I'll tab, it must, I must either be able to scroll down and click, uh, so okay. there's a tab at the bottom, or I need to be, I'll tab to it. Now, if I'll tab, it takes half a second or a second, and it just it okay, slows right. you down So it wasn't time. physically the way they redesigned the interface. It's more the... The smoothness of the interface. It needs to speed up a lot. Now, isn't that directly linked to your process and graphics card? Uh, running G- GeForce graphics card, accelerated. You can't go better than that. With the NVIDIA car, uh, things okay. in there. What they, what I have heard is it actually could be a possible problem that I'm running dual monitor, and they haven't quite worked out the bug with dual monitors yet. So it and could be an X, be X problem, actually not an interface problem. No, apparently because uh, GNOME works beautifully and is quick and snappy. Apparently, it's a Unity problem that they haven't quite worked out yet. Okay. But oh, well, look, I'm waiting for the next release, and then I will put myself through the hell again. I hope they haven't lost again. all those users because of this bad release. Because you, you, you can downgrade. I know, but by default, it installs Unity. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that's not going to kill them. And uh, well, well, we'll see. But I mean, we know at least, not like the rest of the market, we don't have to wait forever for the next version. Anyway, coming back to w- oh, sorry, WWDC, yeah. one thing that I did see that looked for, for me is very cool and on the iPad is we're now going to get, you could run multiple windows on the iPad, but now it's going to be tabbed. And the advantage with this in your is browser. in the browser and it's going to work like your normal browser does with the tabs. And the reason was this, currently now if you in the iPad, you open the browser and you open one website. And it's taking a while to download. And you go, oh, well, let me quickly open another thing that, you know, let's do some multitasking. It stops downloading that website and loads the next one. And when you go back, it then starts downloading that one again. Uh, yes, it, it, and it, it, it irritates. So you've got to, you learn, you wait for the whole thing to download, and then you switch. And what they say is with the tab ones is, and also the switching mechanism is it's a, you click, open up a new interface, then click the window, which opens it. So it's a, it's a two-step process to get to the next tab. With this one, it's going to be a single click to get the next tab. And they say because of the, uh, the, the the new, I hope that they theorizing the way because of this is that the tabs will basically be multitask and be able to be pulling in the background. To load simultaneously. Mm. Well, from a programming perspective, it's still just another thread. So if they weren't allowing the next six and second thread to run in the background, when you look at Chrome or Internet Explorer, all of them, when you open a new tab, it's a new thread of the browser that's just not, linking back. Not for back Firefox. That's just linking back. Are they all running in one thread? On Firefox, Firefox runs one thread, or used to. They're starting to go multi-threaded. So, yeah, it's going to be about how do they prioritize the threads and which one's going to get to the top. Um, I, I do think, I don't mind if they switch between the two threads or let the one finish. But this one, it just it will stop. If I stay on that second web page, the first web page will never load. 
Mm. Until I have it active in front of me. Just bear in mind from their point of view. I mean, multitasking is being a long debate in the mobile sense mm. because of battery life. All right. Yeah. So if you've now opened up by accident a website in the background that keeps on doing something, a refresh or whatever, and it keeps on sitting there, it's going to kill the battery. So it makes actually it makes sense for them to stop the processing okay. of a page in all the right. background. Following your logic, if I have that page open in front of me doing something all the time, you're going to know. You what I'm saying? You're yeah. going to know the page is doing something. It's not going to sit in the background chowing up unknown battery life. Uh, you'll, you'll I, would still have, I would have approached it differently and just because there's so many meta tags, you can actually pause. Mm -hmm. I mean, the refresh, you can pause the JavaScripting, you can pause all that stuff. So still download the whole thing, yeah. but just don't process anything on the page. Well, well, let's see. It's one of my bugbears with it. And bit by bit, they're getting because there is some slight multitasking in there. So I'm hoping that will fix it. I must just say for the record, after all of that, I still don't want to have iPad. If I win one from my broadband, yes, uh, it's not like I'm going to give it away, but uh, it still won't make me buy an iPad, sorry. You'll give it to your wife? Well, I'll do that, yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Oh, on that, sorry. We, this has come up a couple of weeks. I just quickly want to say, uh, MTN phoned me today. Uh, stock will be in stores of the HTC Flyer and of the uh, Hawaii Slim will be on Friday. Oh. Cool. Um, also, my brother, you know, is it Acer? Acer have also got a tablet out now. Yes. yes. My brother got it. And? He loves it. He says he can watch all his movies off of it. It, it is running Honeycomb as far as I know. Um, he just plugs in his USB drive. So at some point, I'm going to sit down and ask him or get him to send me some pictures. Okay. Because he's in England now. Um, but he says it's it's very, very cool. Well, I also just uh, got a hold of Toshiba South Africa again this week about the Folio 100 they pulled. And they got back to me and said, no, it's been delayed again because they're waiting for Honeycomb to be released by Google. So they don't want to go into a fist fight about why is all the other suppliers getting it and Toshiba's battling. So, yeah, don't expect anything from Toshiba on that front in the very near, near future. future. All right. Okay, into the next one. Um, Celia, do you want to talk about this? This is the uh, oh, anti -meter. Yes. Um, scientists at CERN are doing various experiments. And one of them is trying to trap antimatter and study its properties. Now, previously, they were successful in trapping antimatter, but I think it was something like 40 seconds or, I don't know, something ridiculously short. Yeah. And now, finally, they've managed to trap um, or is trap the correct word? It's generate. Generate, I um, suppose. Basically, they, they use a large hydron collider to do this. Yes, like that, yeah. correct. Um, but so they've managed to contain anti-hydrogen, which is the antimatter version of hydrogen, for 16 minutes. Um, now, why do we care? We care because there's there seems to be an imbalance of things. According to um, one physicist here from the University of California, that he's saying that we live in a universe that is he's full of matter. Mm. And he's saying clearly there's asymmetry somewhere. So they're trying to understand antimatter's properties and perhaps determine where where is well, it I in know the one of the things is they... they they're looking for it in the universe and they can't find it. Well, no, 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 no. Well, no. there's not enough of it in the universe. No. Th what they're saying is we, for some other reason, the universe settled in matter, yep. not antimatter. So by trying to study antimatter's properties, maybe they can figure out why the universe or our observable universe stabilized in the matter field well, and not... To explain, the, uh, the, the, there's a bit more to than that. What they're theorizing is actually for every matter particle, there should be an antimatter. There should be. And they can't find it. So they're trying to work out why. Or maybe, yes, but maybe it's not quite as simple as that. Yeah. Maybe there isn't, maybe antimatter doesn't exist, um, but then they're trying to figure out why, why is the stable equilibrium matter and not antimatter? Um, so there's, uh, there are various um, and, theories. Yeah. And, and the reason for this is when you know, the antimatter and the matter meet, they basically cancel each other out. Correct. Yeah, just to go in a bit more. Um, also, some other interesting fact with the 15 minutes, it's 5,000 times longer than they've been able to do it before. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you're also telling me like some of the pro 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 uh, things I want to test is, does gravity work the same way? 
Correct, yeah, because, um, you know, we obviously our observable universe is matter, and so we have laws describing how matter behaves. And now if you've got antimatter, what laws will now apply to its behavior? So will antimatter still be pulled towards the Earth? Will laws of gravity still apply? Um, so that kind of thing they're now hoping to investigate further. And also just another, um, what was interesting is, um, I see Johan speeding us up, and that's made me lose my thought. I'm so sorry. That's okay. But anyway, there's there's a lovely article published in Scientific American on uh, this latest trapping of anti-hydrogen, and it's worth reading up. Cool. Go check it out. It's very, very interesting what they're doing, and they can run the tests, and yeah. Um, all right, I uh, just got a little tip here that I came across quickly that I wanted to add. Um, if you add file, create a file basically named dash i, this in Linux, inside a directory, it stops you from deleting it accidentally. Uh, okay, I, I saw your show notes on this. So if you create a file inside of a directory minus i. Let's see if you've got a directory that's actually quite important. And you run uh, rm minus rf asterisk. Okay, number one for all the Linux users or non-Linux users out there, don't ever go and do it on somebody's machine. That's not funny. Okay, but in any case, same as going format C. Uh, no, it's worse because this will run at all files. Yes. Format C will stop at some point for saying, "Yeah, some operating." It's not necessarily. Ask my friend who did it because he was trying to get some more space on his PC the other day. Yeah, but he was running ninety eight or something. The new operating yeah. Vista and Windows Seven will actually not. It will tell you the volume yeah. is mounted and won't format it. Um, but because Linux is uh, they more assume you powerful, know you doing, know yeah. what you're doing. So when you run this command, and the same applies to your Mac, just for interest's sake. If you run RM minus, <laughs> yeah, Cecilia, you're going to get the same result. But what I just wanted to ask is this. If you've got a sub-sub-directory, will it still delete the rest and actually stop? I think it, from what I understand, with this, it will, inv everything in that, in that directory will, will be safe. Very interesting. Uh, as far as I know, basically I think the dash i gets picked up with the remove command um, and it does something. I haven't tested this so I, I take it with a pinch of salt pinch of salt and test it but if it works because I have done things like this accidentally when I thought I was in other directories or on other PCs and I have burnt myself so I'm going to be doing this to some of my directories um, for anybody that missed that little piece of sarcasm about salt just watch please watch a show of last week yeah. we had an in left discussion about salting passwords Please refer back to that show. All right. And then into our final story, which is actually just a cool video. Um, some guys have basically got together and built a die wheel, which is effectively, I'm sure you've seen them. It's two wheels uh, with where you sit inside. Um, I'm sure I'm just waiting for the video to come up. I've got it. I've got it. Don't worry. No, no. Here we go. I'll try to find where my. I'm just going to play it, yeah? So those people watching on the live or the video stream, you can see the dial wheel. The downloaded version. Um, and basically, these are some. I think they're mechanical engineers who got together a couple of students. Um, Take us through what makes this one unique. I'm trying to open the link, which is not working with me at the moment. Um, it's basically they've done a lot of stabilizing and stuff like that. They, they in the initial bit, they go through all the problems you actually have with dial wheels. And the thing is that w keeping you centered is very prob problematic because you sway backwards and forwards. Like you we're seeing now in the video. Yeah. Um, also, there's a thing once they get up to speed, that they wobble backwards from side to side, left and right, especially when you're turning. And basically, they've now gone and put stabilization control systems in to keep you centered and to also then take care of as you're turning quickly to keep you from wobbling in these things. Then also to the point where they even get it that you can see even there it takes you upside down. You can also drive this thing upside down and it will keep you upright. So Unbelievable. You well, the amazing thing for me is this guy's driving a little ju joystick. He's driving this whole system mm. and oh, this must be so much fun. Now, the, half the thing is stuff like this is actually not that they built the die wheel. It's the control systems that they built mm. into it. Um, they are very cool. Wait, where did you say they, which students was this? From where? I can't open that link, so I can't read. Okay. Okay. Either way, this is amazing. Go have go, a look. Go check In the out. show notes, got a link to the website. There's some very nice, cool pictures about the system. It's um, 
Um, Australia's University of Adelaide. Okay, don't go and look at it. It's Australia. We really don't care. <laughs> 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 no, come. It's cool tech. Always support it cool, is cool tech. tech. I don't uh, care where it's from. Support cool tech. Um, agreed. Cool. All right, and with that, we're going to end. I just want to thank Celia for coming in. No problem. For filling in for Stuart. Uh, Get yeah. better, Stuart. Uh, Johan else for mixing for us once again. It's so much Always better when pleasure. you do it. Always a pleasure. Um, and I uh, ask you to please tune in tomorrow for the LT Afrikaans show. Yeah, please join us tomorrow night. I, I secured a guy from um, uh, uh, blocksuniverse.co.za. He'll be joining us tomorrow night. Uh, he runs a Blocks Universe is a Lego site. He does on online sales of Lego, and he's going to bring us some samples and talk about the history of Lego, where it's going, and what you can actually do with Lego today, which is going to be quite interesting. Please join us tomorrow night. Cool. And of same course, time, you same can place. Uh, join us on our website, which is the short version is ltnet.tv, or search for Let's Talk Network.tv. Uh, from there, we've got all our, you know, follow us on Twitter. Uh, join our Facebook group and or please or most importantly send us some feedback what do you think of the show uh, what topics would you like covered would you like us to talk about um, anything you want cool All right. thank you very much cheerio thanks bye bye cheers right.